And welcome, everybody. My name is Keith Barker. Welcome to the Keith Barker channel here on YouTube. Our focus is on the technologies surrounding Cisco's CCNA, which is currently exam 200-301, but in four or five years, maybe they'll have a new name. I don't know. In any case, our focus today is wireless, radius, and troubleshooting. And so what I have is I have a, three objectives for our video today. And one is to share with you uh, the in a wireless environment with a wireless LAN controller, how and where to go to the individual components to make it work. Because I was looking at the blueprint for the current exam and module one had wireless, module two included wireless, module five included wireless. And so I thought, well, let me go ahead and do a lab, a packet tracer lab that will walk you through the paces of what you can practice with and get hands on with. And also I'd like to share with you in a live environment, those ingredients to really make it work. Because I've got some questions on that too. It's like, how do I associate like uh, a new wireless VLAN, uh, network with VLAN 20 on the local area network? How do I link those together? So what I like to do is from soup to dessert, walk you through uh, quickly how to do that and then introduce you to a troubleshooting lab so you can have some fun with that. All right, so without further ado, uh, also I'm trying out something new today. I'm going to a bigger desktop. I haven't dialed it. <laughs> So thanks for being part of my experiment today as I go to a bigger desktop and uh, make sure everything's being seen. All right, so let's take a look at that desktop. And this is simply a browser on this desktop. Let me pop in a picture there. There we go. Hi, everybody. And for this new Packet Tracer Lab, you simply go to thekeithbarker.com and you just go down to Downloads. And here is the one that I'm introducing today. Cisco PT Packet Tracer Troubleshooting WLC Wireless LAN Controllers and Radius which is a form of doing AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting using a centralized server. And we use the protocol called Radius, so we can call that device a Radius server or a AAA server or an authentication server. It all is talking about the same animal. All right, so I've downloaded that. I would encourage you to download that as well. And at the end, we'll go ahead and walk through or take a look at that troubleshooting scenario, and I have a little surprise for you there as well. Okay, let's take a look at that lab. And here it is. I bring out my pen. And uh, I, always, I often get a question, what pen do you use right on top of your screens? I use Epic Pen. It's very, very affordable, right on top of everything. And that's what I'll be using here today. So the, the basic concept of wireless LAN controllers is we have some access points, which are the radios that are sending and receiving uh, signals back and forth between devices. And then instead of managing those in, independently, we have a controller. WLC is an acronym for wireless LAN controller. And here's what happens. When these guys boot up, through via DHCP or through a DNS lookup, they discover who the wireless LAN controller is. They build a really cool tunnel between themselves and that controller. And then they say, we're ready. And the controller then hands out the information. What frequencies should they use? What wireless uh, VLAN identifiers, SSIDs should they advertise and so forth? And then when an employee authenticates or somebody connects, the access point in what's called lightweight access configuration, access point configuration, it doesn't do all the work. It's simply gets the signals from the wireless device, sends them over the tunnel to the controller, and then waits for the controller to say, yes, okay, let them in, or no, don't let them in, based on what the configuration is there on the controller. Also, the controller, if we have a user like Bob, if we're using 802.1x and centralized authentication, what we can do is we can have the wireless LAN controller, when Bob puts in the right parameters, including his information, like username and password and so forth, uh, when he authenticates with the access point, that authentication request from the access point goes over to the controller and we can have the controller talk to a server. So in this example, this would be a AAA server. AAA is a generic term for not the, not the Automobile Association of America, but rather the authentication, authorization, and accounting. And so if we wanna do our control there, we can specify usernames and passwords, or we can have a AAA server talk to Active Directory. But in any case, a user like Bob, when they log in, Bob could log in through any access point, through any controller, because the centralized management of all those usernames and passwords are on the AAA server. So the AAA server, the wireless LAN controller is gonna to talk to it via radius and use the radius protocol to authenticate. So those are the, there's a lot that can go wrong here. So let me share with you some of those details that might go wrong. In order for the wireless LAN controller to talk to the AAA server, it's gonna to need to have the right credentials to allow it, them to talk to each other. This AAA server is going to see the wireless LAN controller as a client, and that client's going to ask, "Hey, is Bob? You know, are these the right? Is this the right information for Bob? Can Bob log in?" So the play-by-play -play would Bob would try to authenticate here, 
The access point would send it down to the controller. The controller, if we're using AAA, would send it to the AAA server. The AAA server would say yes or no. That would be fed back up to the access point, which would then allow Bob access into the network. OK. So I thought to myself, self, this is a packet tracer troubleshooting lab. I thought, let me walk through. I have a, a couple basic steps. I thought, I want to share with you how to do this on a real wireless LAN controller. And so what I have is, this is so fun. I'm going to use this space over here because I have more room now. Uh, what I have in my lab environment, I've got a wireless LAN controller, and it's virtualized. Let me see if I'm writing on top of my face. Not yet. So it's virtualized, meaning it's running in a, a hypervisor. It's a virtualized wireless LAN controller. And then I've got connectivity over to a, a switch. I think this is port 13 on the switch. And what we're going to do here, this is important. On the switch, we need to trunk. On our, not on Packet Tracer, because <laughs> Packet Tracer has a few limitations. But on a real wireless LAN controller and a real switch, we'd want to trunk here. Because maybe we have five VLANs or five SSIDs, and we're associating those five different wireless networks with five different VLANs. Well, if, if Bob connects to a VLAN called, uh, let's say, user Wi-Fi, and that's associated with, that's, and so if Bob associates with user Wi-Fi, and that specific Wi-Fi wi network is associated with VLAN 20, we need to make sure that the wireless LAN controller, as it forwards that traffic on behalf of that Wi-Fi network, because all the traffic is going through the tunnel, uh, it's going to be tagged appropriately and sent for VLAN 20. So this has to be a trunk. So on the switch, it has to be a trunk. And on a real wireless LAN controller, it's going to be doing tagging. And so as we, have, uh, as we configure our interfaces here, I'll walk you through that here in a moment. It's important that we have tagging on the switch. So I would say this. For what I'd like to walk you through, I've got VLANs 10, 20, and 30. VLAN 10 is a user VLAN. And uh, VLAN 20 is a guest VLAN. And VLAN 30 is a VLAN I've got for um, like servers and controllers and such. So one of the first things to do in a production environment, if you're, if you're setting this up with physical gear, is to make sure that you have those VLANs created and you have a trunk on this switch port that's going to the wireless LAN controller. So I thought, what's a, what's a really good way to demonstrate this? And the answer is, <laughs> show you live. So this is a switch, wrong switch. It is a switch, but it's the wrong switch. I need to go to uh, switch A, which is which is this switch, by the way, right there, the one that's been in mothballs for a long time. And I, I, I dusted it off and got it set up, and it's perfect for what we want to do here. All right, so this is the switch, and it's called switch A. There we go. So I'm connected to switch A there in the physical world, and let's do a show interface trunk. Let's do show VLAN brief. All right. Uh, show VLAN brief. That's what happens when you mash up two commands together. So I've got, here's all my access ports. I don't have a whole bunch carved out yet, but I've got VLANs for 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Great. And um, I'm interested in show interface trunk. I'm going to make sure that VLAN or FA0 slash 13, which is connected to my wireless access controller or my wireless LAN controller is a trunk, and it is. So it's currently a trunk. It's allowing all these VLANs. You don't have to allow all the VLANs you have in your environment, but you want to allow the ones that you are going to support for wireless networks. In this case, I didn't put a filter on, so by trunk, trunking by default is allowing all VLANs. Great. Check. Done. Secondly, we would want to make sure we have configured appropriately the wireless LAN controller. So I have a virtual wireless LAN controller somewhere. <laughs> somewhere out of all these tabs. Uh, I think it's in. There we go. It's up here. So, Here's the login page. Now, in the Packet Tracer Lab, which you have the opportunity to download and do, uh, the username is admin, and the password is capital C I S C O exclamation mark two three. And I will put that here as well. Oh, did I say one two three? No, that's why I'm writing it out. Cisco exclamation mark two three is the password. And anywhere in the Packet Tracer Lab, I use the password. That's it. That way, it won't be a password guessing game. It'll just be, oh, that's the password we're using. Also, in Packet Tracer, when you type in admin and the password and you press OK or press Enter, Packet Tracer doesn't realize you're trying to click that button. So you can do it here on Live Gear, but in Packet Tracer, put in the username, put in the password, and then click OK. Don't just press Enter. Otherwise, it gives you invalid password. So that's many hours of your life. <laughs> you don't have to like, I know I set that password up. I know. I set... So just click on Enter. Also, there's a separate video 
that I have where I demonstrate creating a packet tracer lab from scratch with the wireless LAN controller and the access points and connecting clients. That's in the master playlist too, if you want to check that out. So feel free to take a look at that. All right, let me clear that off. Let me click on OK. And uh, I guess I timed out Cisco exclamation mark two three with a capital C at the beginning. All right. Ta -da! Now, the, uh, this is an eval. I downloaded this from Cisco. And if you need this image, I cannot supply it. But uh, they have evals that uh, some are downloadable, some are not. But anyway, this, I just got this a few days ago, downloaded it. And I'm running it inside of a hypervisor, which is a fancy way for saying a machine that can run other virtual machines. I'm using VMware Workstation for this. And uh, this is how it pops up at the beginning, but this isn't the interface that most people are used to if they've worked with Packet Tracer. All you need to do is up here on the right, just click on Advanced, and uh, my face is in the way. Let me get that out of the way. There you go. So just click on Advanced right here. And then you have the, the same old look and feel that you would normally. And let me make my font just a little bit bigger here. There we go. I'll make sure it's readable. All right, so this is the wireless LAN controller interface. I've got a self-signed certificate on it. And that's why that's showing up with the certificate error up there. Also, there's a service port, which you can use to connect to it for management. And then there's also all the other interfaces. So, okay, on the wireless LAN controller, first things first. And uh, we have the switch, we have the VLANs. Next, with the first thing I do on, this, on the uh, controller is I would specify that we have virtual interfaces or dynamic IP addresses, dynamic interfaces that we can set up and associate with each of our VLANs. So here's the here's the play by play. If we are going to have VLANs 10 for users and VLAN 20 for guests, we'd want to have those VLANs created on the switch. We'd want to trunk to the uh, to the wireless LAN controller, and and we'd also want to create on the wireless LAN controller a new interface, one for VLAN 20 for the guests and one for VLAN 10. And then what we'll do is when we create those wireless networks, they're sort of like VLANs anyway, we're going to associate the interface here on the controller that's a part of that VLAN, and that's the link between a wireless SSID and the actual VLAN on the local area network. So let me show you how to create right out of thin air those interfaces right now. So back here at the interface for the wireless LAN controller, we're going to click on controller up here. And then on the left, we're going to click on interfaces. And I've got a management interface. That was part of this initial setup. And it's using VLAN 30. So here's, here's what that means. So here's the WLC. It's connected to the switch. And this is in my experience, in my labs, and also packet tracer. Right? This is port 13 on the switch. I've configured the switch as a trunk. The switch knows about VLANs 10, 20, and 30. And when I set this up, I told it that my management interface is using VLAN 30. Here's what that means. It means that when I have a, this IP address, 10.30.0.2. And by the way, the, the wireless LAN controller in the Packet Tracer Lab, all, all of its interfaces end in .2. So this is going to represent the, third, the second octet is the same as the VLAN, and the last number is 2 for the wireless LAN controller. So that means if, if the switch has all these VLANs and the switch has interface VLAN, and interface VLAN 20 and interface VLAN 30. So these would all be SVIs. Check out, <laughs> check out our other videos on switch virtual interfaces that exist on multi-layer switches. And if the addresses here were 10.10, I just heard a beep in the background. We'll go figure out what that was later. 10.10.0.1 and 10.20.0.1 and 10.30.0.2. If those are the addresses, if this wireless LAN controller did a ping to 10.30.0.2, what it would do, it would send it out this interface. It would also tag it with VLAN 30. That's what that VLAN identifier means. It's going to tag it. The switch receives that 802.1Q tag of 30, realizes, hey, this frame belongs to VLAN 30, and then forwards it. And if he's pinging this guy, 103001, there would be a response. And if we looked at that traffic in either direction on this trunk, we would see VLAN 30 tag. If we created other v, uh, interfaces, like we create interface for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 here on the wireless LAN controller, and then we pinged addresses that were in that same VLAN, like if we pinged over to this guy right here, it would show us a tag going back and forth over this trunk link of VLAN 10. 
So I just want to say, show you behind the scenes how important that is. Packet Tracer has a real problem with trunking to, to this wireless LAN controller. So I made an adjustment to make sure it still worked in the Packet Tracer lab. But uh, that's like four hours of my life not getting back. But I'd rather do it and and saw, and verify what can or can't be done. Uh, so save you the time and the frustration. But this is how it works in a real environment is that we are going to tag. So going back, if we are going to have VLANs 10 and VLANs 20, we need to create two more interfaces. One for VLAN 10, one for VLAN 20 on the wireless LAN controller. And here's how you do it. So we're under controller and inf interfaces. And over here on the right, let me move my Epic pen. Over here on the right, there's a little button called new. Oh, I moved my face. Dang. Okay. So there's a little button called new up here in the upper right. Let's just click on new. And then go ahead and put in the interface. So let's make one for VLAN 10. It's like a, it's like a virtual interface for the wireless LAN controller. That's uh, a switch virtual interface is to a la multi-layer switch what an interface, a dynamic interface is here on the wireless LAN controller. So we'll call this uh, for users VLAN 10. Let's pretend VLAN 10 is our corp users. And then you can put the VLAN ID here, 10, and I'll get my face out of the way. In the upper right hand corner, we're going to click on apply, and then we're creating this brand new logical interface. So down here under port number, so uh, this interface exists. Like, uh, I'm going to click on apply. I'll come back to this in a moment. As far as what port number, if you click on ports over here on the left, here it shows you your ports that are enabled. So I currently have one port, which is port number one, which is that trunk that's going over to the switch. So you want to choose the right port. So going back to interfaces, uh, uh, I'm not connected. What do you mean I'm not connected? I'm connected. All right. So <laughs> um, I want to go back to this interface used for users on VLAN 10 and I'm going to specify that it's port number one. just want to share with you why I was doing that. The VLAN identifier is 10. That's because I put 10 earlier. You could specify the right VLAN interface or tag number here and then you put in the IP address. So pick an IP address on VLAN 10, whatever that layer 3 subnet is associated with VLAN 10 and put it here. So I'm going to use 10.10.0.2 and a 24-bit mask and the gateway is 10.10. 10.0.1, which is my multi-layer switch. I've already configured that. IPv6 don't care about. I'm going to specify the DHCP server on my network, which is 10.10.0.10. By the way, these are very similar, if not identical, to what I did in the packet tracer lab. So you'll have a chance to actually practice and work with this yourself if you want to get the hands-on. All right, and then in the upper right-hand corner, we, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and click on Apply, and OK, and then go back to Interfaces. And then I've got four users VLAN 10. That's my logical interface that we now have. Let's go ahead and create one more for VLAN 20. We'll click on new and I will go ahead and type uh, for guests VLAN. I'm just writing it out here so you'll see get the correlation. This is going to be a logical interface for VLAN 20 which we're going to use the VLAN 20 for guest traffic. We can set, put up access control lists and filtering to control them from getting other places in the network as well. So we'll put in VLAN ID 20 here and click on apply in the upper right hand corner just like that. All right, and then we'll put in the details. I only have that one physical interface, so great. Put that there, VLAN 20, 10.20.0.2. This is the wireless LAN controller's address on that logical subnet, on that logical network. So it's going to be both a, a SSID eventually when we create the wireless network, and it's also associated with the local area network on VLAN 20. So 255.255.255.0 is the mask. Default gateway for that subnet is 10.20.0.10. And the primary DHCP server is 10.10.0.10. Also, if you want that to work, um, you want to make sure that you have uh, on your default gateways for those various VLANs, you'd want to make sure you have IP helper if you have a centralized DHCP server. We've talked about that also previously. All right, and we'll go ahead and click on apply and say okay to the warning. And let's just verify our work. I'm going to go back and click on interfaces one more time and just check my work. So I've got my management interface has a tag of 30. My users VLAN is going to have a tag of 10 and a, my guests going to have a tag of 20. Now here's the, here's the cool thing. When we create the wireless networks for the users and for the guests, when we create them, we're going to associate those wireless networks with these interfaces. And these interfaces are associated with the correct VLAN tag. And that's how we can associate a wireless network with a local area network and make sure they're the same net. If, we, if that's our intended goal. Okay. Uh, oh, I got something really cool. Let me show you something that I did earlier. 
if you join me for the uh, Packet Tracer Labs, uh, excuse me, let me get my brain on. If you join me for the Kali Pi Labs, where I walk through how to create, uh, take a Raspberry Pi with the Kali Linux image and then do packet sniffing, I used that today. I thought, in fact, I recorded, uh, I was going to say, hey, I recorded this earlier today. I'm recording it right now. <laughs> I recorded this capture earlier today and I'm recording this right now. It's going to live premiere here in about an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm going to keep it pretty tight. Uh, but this is a, a protocol capture that I did with that Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux on the trunk link between the wireless LAN controller and the, um, and the switch. And so right here, this is showing that when I did a ping from 10.10.01 .10 to 10.10.02, the 10.10.01 is the uh, switch virtual interface on the switch, and the 10.10.02 is an interface I created temporarily over in the wireless LAN controller. Check out the tag. It's tag 10 right there. That's at the 802.1Q tag. Let me point that out. Right, right there. And let me go ahead and clear that off. If we go to this bad boy and we did a ping on VLAN 20, it would go ahead and have the 802.1Q tag of 20 on that link back and forth. And if we do that one more time and we go to VLAN 30, the tag is going to include a 30 as it goes back and forth on that trunk. This is the feature that Packet Tracer in version 7.3 <laughs> doesn't do. But uh, so I have a workaround, so you can still do the full practice in the lab. But I just wanted to point out that literally that happens. Also, when I was setting up my virtualized environment with VMware Workstation on my PC and using an extra, that was also like three hours of trying to, because my Windows computer inbound from the switch was eating the tag. It's like, rum, 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 rum. <laughs> just gone. And I thought, no, oh, no, I can. So I, I tried like four or five different ways with four or five different adapters and four or five different settings. And if you do all the math on those, there's a lot of possible combinations. In any event, I did find a solution that gets it got working because I wanted to demonstrate this. All right, so it is, they got the capture, wanted to share that with you, and let me minimize that. All right, so we have an interface for VLAN 10, an interface on VLAN 20. Now, our next step is, do we want to do AAA or not? And if we're gonna do AAA, which means, do we want this wireless LAN controller when it gets, when Bob tries to authenticate, do we want the wireless LAN controller to talk to a AAA server? Yes or no? And based on the topic of this packet tracer lab, the answer is yes. So we need to set up a wireless LAN controller to tell it that it has a AAA server that running, is running Radius, and we have to specify the port. Which port is the best one? The best port to use. It's going to be UDP port. But the, is it, yeah, it is UDP. But so the best port to use is the one that's agreed upon by both these devices. So if the wireless LAN controller says, I'm going to use 18.12 as I talk to this radius server, and the radius server says, I'm expecting this wireless LAN controller to connect and talk to me on 18.12, and we've set up a little password so they can successfully talk to each other, that's the best port to use. <laughs> the one that matches on both sides. Okay, so uh, let's, let's do that. Let's uh, set up a wireless LAN controller, uh, tell the wireless LAN controller about a AAA server. And to do that, we, back at the wireless LAN controller, we would go to security. And security, I'll get my face out of the way. Um, here on security, on the left-hand side, we have AAA, general, radius, authentication. So you just go down that menu on the left, select authentication, and here's where you would add a server. So I did that. I added a server, but if you want to add a new server, you click on, um, click on new, upper right-hand corner, and simply put in the IP address. As far as the secret, this is the secret that's going to be used between the wireless LAN controller and the AAA server. So both sides have to match on that. You can specify an ASCII or hex. Just make sure you do it similar on both sides. So they both can understand and talk to each other. Then you specify the shared secret. This is to make sure that not anybody can talk to your AAA server via radius and say, hey, is this a good password? Because a hacker would love that. If a hacker could just like ask your AAA server over and over again, it could go through a whole dictionary of passwords and usernames and, and get responses. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're only allowing inbound requests with authentication from the, from the AAA clients, like wireless LAN controllers that you specify. All right. Anyway, uh, and there's the, there's the default port number that uh, this wireless LAN controller wants to use, 1812. All right, all right. So if we had the AAA server, we'd want to make sure that we set the AAA server with that same information, that we're expecting incoming requests from this wireless LAN controller on port 1812 with the correct secret. Okay, so we've already got one set up. So I'm going to go back to authentication. There it is. Now, next 
if we want a wireless local area network, we need to create one. So I've got one in place, but let me just walk you through. Yeah, let me walk you through the creation of a new one. So what we do is go to wireless lands here and the upper right hand uh, over here on the right. Not I'm going to put my face back in. Hey, there I am right here. There's an option for disable, enable, remove. So we're going to with create new selected, we'll click on go. That'll create a brand new wireless network. And what do we want? A WAN, a wireless LAN or a remote LAN? So I'm going to go for wireless LAN and let's call this, um, let's make it for our users. So our users are in VLAN 10. So we'll call this Corp Wi-Fi. How about that? Corp Wi-Fi and the SSID, we'll call it Corp Wi-Fi. So when users are looking for wireless networks, assuming we're broadcasting this SSID, they'll see, hey, there's a wireless network called Corp Wi-Fi and they can click on it and then go ahead and put in their authentication with whatever we require and they're good to go. And then we'll go ahead and the upper right hand corner, way over here on the right, we'll click on apply. Okay, so now we have this new Corp Wi-Fi network and now it's our opportunity to put in the details. It's not enabled by default. So we can click on enable, but it, it's probably a good idea to do all the security and then come back and specify we want it enabled. So uh, let's go down here. Interface, so what, if you have radio, like what do you want for this Wi-Fi network? What frequencies do you want to use? You can specify that and then only those frequencies will be used for that Wi-Fi network. Interface groups, this is how we link the SSID of, in this case, Corp Wi-Fi to a specific VLAN. So if we want the corporate users to be in VLAN 10, we select VLAN 10 here. And then as their traffic comes in through the control, through the access point to the controller and then forward it out to the network through the controller, it's gonna have those VLAN 10 tags and be associated with VLAN 10 and that's how that works. That's the link between a Wi-Fi SSID and a wireless LAN controller and the local area network and the VLAN there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save users for VLAN 10. Then we'll click on security. And then what kind of security do we want to use? Uh, WPA2 or better would be ideal. <laughs> so in Packet Tracer, they very much limit what's here, but we'll do WPA2. And then if we scroll down a little bit, it has a lot of really cool options here. Um, I'm going to use WPA2 policy and AES. Great. We scroll down. 802.1x is enabled. What this is referring to here is how do we want to authenticate the user? Do we want to send the request? or Bob the user and his credentials over to the AAA server via Radius, or that's what, it, that's what this means here with 802.1x, or do we want to go ahead and use a pre-shared key? In which case we would just put the pre-shared key right here in ASCII or hex format, and then the user would have to know that pre-shared key. So because we've got a AAA server that we've identified, let's use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove PSK. Click back on 802.1x for the authentication and and let's go over here to AAA servers to make sure we're going to use the AAA server, which is really important. So we specified under security that we had a AAA server and it's here under AAA servers for this SSID, for this wireless network that we're going to specify what server that is we're going to use. So here it shows up from the list because we put it there earlier, or I did with security. And we can check all of our parameters. I think that'll do it. And then in the upper right hand corner, we have the button for apply. And I didn't enable it. So I'm gonna click on enabled and then click on apply. All right, so there we've got one VLAN or one additional wireless network that we just created. If we go back to wireless networks, there we have Corp Wi-Fi, our Wi-Fi. Let's create one more. So up in the upper right hand corner, we'll just go ahead or up here. Well, not quite all the way up to the right. We'll click on create new and we'll call this one guest Wi-Fi, which is going to be VLAN 20, I believe. So we'll call this guest Wi-Fi. And I think I need to be careful with my syntax here. All right. And then apply it. And then we'll simply go ahead and same thing. So I'm going to enable it. As far as security goes, I'm going to go ahead and simply say, I don't want to use 802.1x. I want to use a pre-shared key. We could put the pre-shared key right here. I'm going to use capital C, I-S-C-O. C I S E O with capital C exclamation mark two three and and click apply up here in the upper right and it's enabled for security WPA and pre shared key fantastic or WPA two specifically all right 
So I'll click on apply again just because I'm paranoid. <laughs> and then we'll go back to wireless LANs. And there we have it. We have two wireless local area networks that are now being advertised or will be advertised once we have access points associated with this wireless LAN controller. For the Corp Wi-Fi, they're going to have to authenticate with a username and password. And that's going to be checked on the back end with the AAA server. For individuals who are on the guest network, they do not have to have authentication with the AAA server but they do have to have the pre-shared key. And that's how we set it up. So I wanted to walk you through the setup of how to make this all work, how to link the AAA pieces together with the controller. And now having said that, let's do this. Is there something else? Yeah, so in the, in the live interface, it's fantastic. This is the Packet Tracer Lab that I mentioned a moment ago. And here is where I'm going to give you a couple tips. And uh, yeah, let me start off with a couple tips. So. If I, as I look at a network like this in Packet Tracer, especially a new network, I would read the instructions and say, okay, where is stuff? And as far as where stuff is, here's where stuff is. This is a server, it's running DHCP. It's run and it's running uh, DNS. And it's running web services. And what else is it doing? Oh, it's also acting as a AAA server. All courtesy of Packet Tracer. It's fantastic. So you just go into the server and take a look at the details there. This wire and its address is 10.30.0.10. Yep, right there. Boom. Okay, the wireless LAN controller over here has the IP address of 10.30.0.2. So to manage it, you get on a PC, assuming that PC has connectivity to the network, and you'd open up a browser, the HTTPS, colon, colon, whack, whack, and you can go to the IP address of the wireless LAN controller which is 10.30.0.2, or you can go to WLC. Because WLC, I put an A record on this DNS server, which will resolve it. So you can type a little bit less, and you can go right there, and it'll open up with HTTPS. And uh, so, okay, so those are some tips. The password is always going to be capital C, I S C O, exclamation mark, two, three. So here's the objective for this troubleshooting lab. I thought to myself, yesterday when I was putting most of this together and now I'm filming it now just a little bit before the premiere. How do I effectively, let me go back to the big screen. How do I effectively share with somebody who's fairly new to a wireless LAN controller, like first of all, where stuff is and then how to troubleshoot it? And the answer is, uh, well, <laughs> is show, show them, I said to myself, Keith, show them on a, a live gear, the live wireless LAN controller with a real switch and the trunking and how it works walk them through creating a couple interfaces associated with the right VLANs, show them some captures with the tagging involved so they can really see how those are knit together from the, the trunk between the switch and the wireless LAN controller, and then walk them through creating a couple wireless networks. So those specific tasks, virtually all those, you can do also inside of Packet Tracer. And so instead of just having to build, if you want to build a wireless LAN controller from scratch in Packet Tracer, check out the other video in the master playlist, which is all about from the ground up, building a whole new wireless LAN controller and making it work. All the steps are there. But in this one, I thought I'd inject AAA as well. I've shown you where to go to look at it and how to set it up. And uh, also what I'd like to do is in the Packet Tracer lab, let me demonstrate where we would go to verify that as well. So let me move that out of the way. So on the server, Please click on it. If you're not familiar with Packet Tracer yet, it's a wonderful free tool from Cisco. Just go to netacad.com, sign up with a free account, download it, and I'm using 7.3 for this video. So if you want to download the lab file from here, from thekeithbarker.com, and again, it's right here if you want to download it, this one. Uh, download that, make sure you have the software from Cisco, and enjoy, have fun. So. To work with the services on this server, if you go to just if you go to config, you can verify its IP address. Not a bad idea. This is a troubleshooting lab, by the way. So there could be minor issues, minor with the network. Uh, there could be minor issues with various things. So on, you'll have the opportunity to practice in the wireless LAN controller and everywhere else on the network just to find the problems and solve the problems step by step. So it has the right address. And if we go to services and click on HTTP. It's got web services running. I'd like to thank Dan, the layer one man, for helping me with a customized packet tracer web server to make it a little bit more fun. 
So if we go like to the desktop on this, I'm on the server itself, and we go to ourself, which is 127.0.0.1. So 127.0.0.1 is a loopback address. It's a it means me. Every every device on the planet thinks, oh, that's me. <laughs> so I'm just going to the local server, uh, and so uh, Dan helped me set this up. It's so fan, it's fanta fantastic. It's very 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 fun. All right. So anyway, um, so it has the the service running for DHCP. All right, web services. It has DHCP services running. It has pools for each of the three networks, the ten, the twenty, the thirty networks. It's got DNS running. There's an A record for WLAN controller and also for the KeithBarker.com, which is one of our objectives to have the wireless clients connect to the KeithBarker.com. There's AAA set up right here as well. So this wireless this this AAA server, this radius server, knows about the client at 103002. That's the wireless LAN controller. It also has a couple of usernames, Bob and Lois. Their passwords right here, plain text to make it easier. And uh, that's the server itself. To work with this wireless LAN controller, what we need to do is go to the a PC. And you can also do that from the server. It has reachability too. But And go to the desktop and go to web browser and go to HTTPS colon WAC WAC WLC. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're not getting there from here. So we might want to try it from the server and go to the desktop. Any 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 computer in a, in a storm, right? So let's go to uh, h https colon whack whack wlc go. Huh, it's not working either. Well, hopefully you'll figure it out because uh, it would be really awesome to troubleshoot this. So there is some basic connectivity problems as well. And here's what I would encourage you to do. A couple things I would do is for these links to have a clue in troubleshooting that makes it a little bit faster. I prefer to go to options excuse me view i take it back options and preferences and then i like to show port labels so i know which ports i'm looking at and also up here show link lights to get a clue about what the heck is going on with these devices so i can see right here between the wireless line controller and the multi-layer switch <laughs> they're red and i can see the link up here between the ap's and the switches they're red and so red means it's down. And that would be some of the first things I'd want to fix before you uh, go any further. Fix the network before we start tweaking and working with the wireless network. Make sure the infrastructure is solid and then start working on the wireless network. And to do that, I would suggest, you can just do it from right here from this PC. Connect over to the wireless LAN controller once it's functioning. And the goal is this. The goal is to get this employee device which is going to use the Corp Wi-Fi network to be able to open a browser to, uh, that's the real one, let me back up, to this, thekeithbarker.com, which is the web server running here. That means DNS is working, the wireless is working, life is good. And then for this guest device, it also should associate with an AP. It doesn't matter if it's this one or this one, uh, any AP in a storm, because they're both supporting, they're bo they both should support both Wi-Fi networks, this guest device with a pre-shared key to be able to connect, and then once it's connected to the Wi-Fi network, be able to successfully access that server at thekeithbarker.com. All right, that is the objective for your lab, and I am going to leave it at that. I discovered that people can watch a lot of videos and they can have a lot of fun. And by George, on this channel, my goal is to give you some fun. I like fun, and I do. I enjoy networking, I get a kick out of it. I also realize in a very significant way that the best learning that's going to happen for you is to get hands-on practice. So I leave this lab in your capable hands. TheKeithBarker.com is where you can download it, launch it, log in with your Cisco account so it'll let you run it, and then Troubleshoot it. And if when you troubleshoot it, if you've taken the time to actually do it and you have success where both clients can access the KeithBarker.com website inside of Packet Tracer, leave me a comment on this video saying, I did it. And you don't need to leave a timestamp like, I did it in 10 minutes, or I did it in four hours, or it took me five tries. You don't have to, you're welcome to put anything you want. I'm always interested in your success. My key is, I would love to see you practice and practice and practice and get better and better with it. Because if you do this lab, if you work through it using the tutorial we did at the beginning of this video, 
you'll have, hmm, I would say like 95% of what you need to know of what Cisco is asking you regarding wireless for your CCNA. And that's my intent. My intent is to have you study, learn, get better, and also check this out. It's fun because when you go into a production environment and you're troubleshooting something, you're going to find it very comforting to say, oh, I know where to look. Like, is, is the AAA server information wrong? Or is the virtual IP address or the dynamic IP interface, is it not configured correctly? Does it have the wrong tag, et cetera? Or is it not, is it not trunked to the switch correctly? Uh, all those things, because if you practice with it, it's great. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ah, don't leave yet. Let me tell you about one other thing I did to make this lab work. Uh, and here it is. The trunking from the actual uh, packet tracer multi-layer switch to the wireless LAN controller, if you, if you do trunking and it's doing the tags, those tags aren't processed correctly by the wireless LAN controller. So uh, what I did was the switch is trunked. The switch is trunked over to, uh, let, me, let me just verify this. Let me verify this with you. I've got the lab open. Eh, I've got the lab open and I'm not afraid to use it. So let's, let's just verify real quick on the multi-layer switch. Because I don't want this to be a stumbling block for you. This is the multi-layer switch show, run, and uh, let's go up to interface 13. Okay, so here's what I did. I, I made it a trunk because I wanted to uh, reinforce on your mind the fact that you need a trunk going to a real wireless LAN controller. So it's got trunking is on. Oh, and if you're looking for one of the pro <laughs> if you're looking for one of the problems, this might be one of them. I don't know. Shut down ports. But I made the native VLAN VLAN 30. And the reason I made the native VLAN VLAN 30 is because when the switch sends out frames for VLAN 30, it won't tag them. And so on the on the wireless LAN controller, I've got my management interface with no tagging and that makes this work so that it it's i cheated a little bit there to to make it function also uh there's a couple other things behind the scenes that had to be a little bit fudged to make this packet tracer lab work but i've sorted all that out my goal is to have you practice 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 and have a lot of fun with it and get better and better with it so i wish you the best of luck with this lab let me know how you do uh, if you would like a walkthrough of solving this because i made it i i put in the problems uh, it's going to be pretty easy for me to identify what they are. However, if you'd like me to do a walkthrough as a short video <laughs> uh, or however long it takes to do that walkthrough of solving it, just leave me a note. And if there's a lot of people say, yeah, I'd love to see a walkthrough. Great. I'd be happy to do it. It would be fairly easy to do. All right. So with that, I'll see you in the next live event. Also, after the premieres of these videos, we often join up in the Discord server. In fact, let me, uh, let me tell you about that. On the Discord server... I mentioned it in the in the in these streams and say, hey, afterwards, after the premiere when it's first launched, we we jump in the Discord server and we do a voice chat. And I had I've had more than one person tell me, yeah, I got in the Discord server and I saw there was chat rooms, but I didn't realize how to you know where where the voice stuff was happening. And let me show you where that is. <laughs> so this is the Discord server, and let's see here. Uh, there's the icon right there. There it is. So uh, I'll put a link in the description below for this video. Jump on the Discord server. And in the Discord server, I'd like to thank my ad the admins on there, by the way, which are uh, Trevor and Kelvin. They're amazing. And what you do is you go to the Discord server, uh, click on it. That's the logo right there for it. And then voice channels, CCNA voice chat right there. Which, which I just joined. I will go ahead and exit out of that. But you just click on CCNA voice chat and you are there. You are with us and you just mute your mic if you're not talking to cut background noise. If you want to talk, talk. And uh, we usually hang out for sometimes quite a while. And uh, if, if you still want to say hi for a few minutes, we'd love to have you as well. But I want to make sure everybody knew where it was. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the very next live event, wherever that might be. Until then, have a great day and be well.